This is Fusion 360. Fusion 360 is the ultimate tool for 3D modeling, manufacturing, and creating industrial projects. Welcome to day one of learning Fusion 360 for 3D printing. My name is Brandon. In today's tutorial, we are going to cover the user interface of this program and exactly everything you need to know when it comes to 3D modeling within Fusion 360. So if you are a complete beginner just getting started with 3D modeling, or if you're someone that's been 3D printing for several years now and wants to start learning how to create their own designs, then you are in the right place. I've been creating 3D printable designs for several years now, and, and over the past several years, I learned a ton about 3D modeling, 3D printing, and more so how to turn my 3D designs into 3D printable objects in which I use to sell and to even monetize from those designs. So if you're ready to start learning how to create your own designs, then this video is for you. You'll first want to download the hobbyist license of Fusion 360. This license is 100% free. You can download a free trial for the program as well which is a separate license but then you'll be prompted to purchase the program after 30 days the hobbyist license is actually free for one whole year and then you can renew it after that additionally it does also allow you to monetize your designs up to a thousand dollars and that way you can make some money first and you can use that to fund the purchase of the program later on once you've downloaded the software let's jump into fusion and get started all right, so once you've downloaded Fusion 360, you should have your application open with a blank canvas. Now, as of right now, you don't need to do anything because what I'm gonna do now in this video is basically give you a general idea of the general workspace within Fusion 360 and essentially everything you need to know. So if you already are familiar with Fusion 360 and you have used the software, um, please feel free to skip over to the next part. But if you've never opened Fusion 360 and you've never opened the software and all of this is completely new to you, so please make sure to watch this video in full as I'll be breaking down some important key features that will make this useful for the next video. So within Fusion 360, you have five general working areas. You have the product workspace, which is shown right here in the middle of the screen. You have the browser tab, which is on the left-hand side of the screen, which basically hosts all the bodies, sketches, and components you create within Fusion 360, which is represented within this little bar here, and they can be separated into different components as well. You also have the tool tab, which represents a variety of tools and features you can use on your projects. Down below, you have the timeline tab, which represents every feature, sketch, and component you create within Fusion 360. And lastly, you have the documents and files tab, which is represented here at the very top left-hand side of the screen. So with that said, let's go ahead and break each piece down into detail. That way you can familiarize yourself with each tool. We first have the product workspace, which is shown right here in the middle. This is where you will create, sketch, design. Virtually anything you do within the software will always be within this canvas here. Additionally, within the 3D environment here, we can actually rotate around our product, take a good look at it, underneath it, on top of it, to the side of it, and basically it's the 3D environment of our design here. Additionally, we also have a small little square, which is represented on the top right hand side. This is a 3D square, which represents the angle or the, or the plane that we are looking at. So here, this is represented as the front. This is represented as the right. And we can also reorient this to get a top down view of our product and even a bottom down view of our product. Additionally, if we want to reset to the original position of the design um, from the very beginning, there's this home icon, which we can select. And now we'll be put back into uh, Fusion 360 default position. Next on this list is the browser tab. Now this tab on the left hand side of the screen hosts a variety of sketches, bodies, joints, and many other parts and pieces that essentially whatever you create within this project will be projected or will be shown in here. So think of each piece or think of this like a file cabinet for your design. And within that file cabinet, you're able to organize each and every single sheet of paper. And in this instance, a sheet of paper being a body, and you can organize each and every single file within that drawer. So basically it's like a glorified uh, file cabinet per se. The next on this list is tools. So which is shown on the top left hand side, extending to the middle of the screen. You should see we have a variety of create tools, modify tools, assemble tools, construct tools, inspect, insert, select, and and the list goes on. Now they are categorized, meaning that there is a category of tools that we can use. So for example, there's solids, there's for surfaces, for meshes, sheet metals, plastic, and utilities. 
Additionally, there's also different workspaces we can hover over, which is shown on the left-hand side, which is in the design workspace. So this is the workspace we are in. This is the default workspace for Fusion 360. And if we were to se select this or toggle this, you should see that we have a couple different more. We have render, animation, manufacture, and drawing. Now we do have generative design and, and simulation uh, hollowed out or kind of uh, um, grayed out. And the reason for that is because these are premium features as shown with this little icon here. But generally speaking, most of you will be working within the design workspace, especially if you're using this for 3D printing. The next on this list is the timeline tab, which is represented here at the very bottom of the screen. Now the timeline tab is probably one of the most useful features within this software because it basically allows you to see every sketch, feature, body, or virtually anything that you create within Fusion 360 essentially with whatever you create within the Fusion 360 environment will show up within this timeline tab here. Additionally, it also acts as a portal for us to go back in time to go back and make any changes, uh, add, add changes, or even create or modify existing changes within a certain piece. So for example, if I were to double click on this little part here, you'd see it would take me back in time and it's to the part where exactly I extruded this piece 0.4 inches outwards. Additionally, if I want to go to a certain part, maybe a little bit forward, you can also see this is represented here in the timeline tab exactly of when I extruded this upward within here. Additionally, any errors or any possible problems that you have shown within your design, this will also be shown as this little yellow or maybe even a red marker to indicate any possible issues. So that's the whole reason or the whole purpose of a timeline tab, which basically allows you to see what you're doing every step of the process. And if I were to break this down or to kind of give you a uh, a general idea of how this is or how this works think of it like a lego set so when you purchase a lego set you open it up you read the instruction manual and in that manual you have a series of steps to create the lego you have step one step two step three step four and every step of the way you're adding more and more pieces to that project and in this instance the timeline being the exact same thing every time you add a new piece or add a new part or change something you're adding that to that timeline and what makes the timeline so unique contrary to legos where in legos if you make a mistake at step 30 and you're on step 90 you're gonna have to disassemble the lego and probably have to go back in order to fix step 30 where in fusion 360 you can actually go back in time to step 30 add those changes and then go back to step 90 without it possibly affecting whatever you did along the way, assuming that you did it correctly from the beginning. So that's the whole purpose of the timeline feature. And that's probably why I went into more detail compared to every other, because it's probably one of the most useful tools within this software. The last thing I want to show you is this top interface, which is at the very top of the screen. This basically allows us to, fi to find files, create files and save our existing files. For example, on the left hand side, we have the data panel, which shows all the files and designs we created within Fusion 360. On the right hand side of that, we also have this little file document here, which allows us to create new designs and save our existing designs. Right next to that, we have the save icon, which also allows us to save, or we can also type in command S or control S on Windows to save that file. Right next to that, we have the undo and redo button, which allows us to undo any feature or design we added or redo it in case we actually want it back. And skipping over the home, which is like another data panel, we have the design that we are working on and as well as the version number of that design. Additionally, right next to that, we have a plus icon, which allows us to start a new design, which is totally unrelated to the existing design here. This is a completely new design. Whatever you do here will be, sep would it would be a separate entity. And right next to that, you have the upgrade menu, which is Fusion telling you to upgrade to their premium software. You have job status, notification center, the help center, and then your account information. So with that said, there's, this is a general overview, overview of the software. I know I'm tossing a lot of information out to you, and I know it can be overwhelming, but just keep in mind, this is just the very first step to learning the software, and I promise you, it does get easier over time. So that pretty much wraps up today's tutorial. Let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section, and as well as if I'm missing anything or if you guys need any clarification on anything uh, mentioned in this video, feel free to let me know down below in the comment section. And as well as if you guys haven't already, feel free to join the 3D printing community down below in the description. In this community, we have a whole bunch of people talking about 3D printing, Fusion 360, and more or less learning CAD and learning how to create their own designs. So if you're interested in joining the community, feel free to join down below. But with that said, this is Brandon signing out and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.